Huh? Don't worry, let's find the Wi-Fi password. Okay, let's start immediately because this looks quite difficult. So first we write our integral, right? And the first thing I want to do is separate these into two integrals. So I'm going to expand our terms out. So that's x cubed cosine x over 2 multiplied by four, root of 4 minus x squared dx. So that's the first term. Then we have plus the same bounds of integration for this. Uh, 1 half multiplied by the root of 4 minus x squared dx. So we start by breaking it down. And then I want you guys to kind of recall the definition of odd functions and even functions. Okay, so odd functions are that negative f of x is equal to f of negative x, and even functions are f of x is equal to f of negative x. And I only bring this up because this left side integral, for me, kind of looks like an odd function. So let's verify that. So let's say that our negative, okay, negative f of x is negative x cubed cosine x over 2 multiplied by 4 minus x squared. Now, would this be the same as x, sorry, negative x cubed cosine negative x over 2, okay, multiplied by the root of 4 minus negative x squared. So are these two sort of sides of equations the same? If you do some basic algebra, you'll find that they actually are the same. So for example, this left-hand side, we can expand it out. So let's just remove these parentheses and it will be negative x cubed of cosine x over two, okay? The root of four minus x squared. So let's still put this question mark over here because we're not too sure, but this part, okay, just becomes negative x cubed as well. Now, cosine is an even function, okay? Cosine is an even function and based from our definition over here, whether I insert an x into it or a negative x into it, it's all the same. So in this case, x over 2 would be the same as negative x over 2 as an input to cosine, okay? So this would just be cosine x over 2. It's just the same as cosine negative x over 2, okay? And for this last part, we know that the square of any negative number would just be positive, okay? So this is just 4 minus x squared. And so both sides of the equation are the same. And so we can actually say that they are an odd function. So why am I all of a sudden talking about odd and even functions? Well, if you take the integral from negative a to a of any odd function with respect to x, this would actually just be zero. Now, why is this the case? Try visualizing it to look something like this. So I'm gonna draw an arbitrary cubic function. Let's say it looks something like that. Okay, it's a pretty bad drawing, but it should do. So let's say we want to take the integral from these two bounds. So this is negative a to a, right? So the area under the curve for these two sides are this part, which is the negative area, okay? And this part, which is the positive area. And since our odd function is actually symmetrical, with respect to the origin, okay, the magnitude of this red area over here is the same as the magnitude of this blue area over here. So they cancel each other out. And so the, it, this part, this integral property always is true. And so applying everything that we've done so far, this left-hand side would just evaluate to zero, okay? Now we have to deal with this right-hand side part. If you notice, this is the only tricky part of our right-hand side integral, right? So root of four minus x squared. Now, what does that look like to you? To me, it looks like a circle function, okay? So let's say y squared plus x squared is equal to r squared, right? This is our general circle function. And so if our r was two, it would look like this, y squared, plus x squared is equal to 4, right? So that's 2 squared, okay? And so if we isolate our y, this would just be the root of 4 minus x squared, which is exactly what this function is. So if we draw it out, this function is actually just this curve over here. And so when we say that we're integrating that curve, okay, from negative 2 to 2, you're actually just getting this area of a semicircle Okay, of radius 2. 
and we know the area of circle, right? That's pi r squared, okay? So this evaluates out to 0 plus pi, okay, multiplied by the radius 2 squared, okay, 2 squared over 2. Why over 2? Because it's a semicircle, not a circle, okay? Now this part, we still have to multiply that by 1 half because you shouldn't forget about this constant over here. And so this evaluates ultimately to 4 pi, okay, over 4, which is equal to pi. And now you're all good until you realize you don't have Wi-Fi to Google the first 10 digits of pi. Yikes.